So this is a a great, 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 great movie. It's showing you the direction that all of this is heading. It's a direction of of trust. It's a direction of loosening, of thinking you know anything about anything in this world. That the world tells us if you don't know about the world, you could die or you won't be able to survive. But actually this is taking you more and more and more into that, what the Course calls salvation. I do not know the thing I am, what I'm doing, where I'm going, how to look upon myself or the world. The ego would say that's gullible, <laughs> that's dumb. <laughs> it would have a few <laughs> choice words for salvation. <laughs> Like, yeah, right, don't even think about it. But actually that Jesus is calling us into that state. And I think one of the things that a lot of us will talk about is, is living a spontaneous life. There's something about even seeming to have this Mexican scenario going on in the dream now. There's somehow, it's deep in our mind, we must be valuing the holy instant more than predictable linear time, predictable plans. You know, they always say, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> the planning is tied in with this construct of a human being. Humans are designed to plan. And in fact, I, in, the, in the parable of David, I was in university for 10 years, and it was a good time of undoing, but there was the there was a, a bachelor's degree that was earned in there, and it was a bachelor's of urban planning. That was my, <laughs> that was literally my <laughs> degree in the world was planner, and then it started to get funnier and funnier, because I was, as I was going through it all, I thought this isn't really what my life is going to be about, and I thought this is a lot of work for nothing is kind of what I kept thinking, because I had the sense that it was going way beyond whatever I was putting my efforts into that it has nothing to do with what I seem to be learning. And it was a bit um, frustrating and disconcerting to be studying and doing coursework and have this deep feeling like, no, this isn't it. But this too shall pass and we'll go off in other directions. So the one thing you can say about miracles, Jesus talks about yeah, 50 characteristics and principles of miracles at the beginning of the book, but miracles are involuntary. Um, when you think about even the human body, there's certain things that seem to be part of the human body that's like our actions that seem to be under conscious control. And then, like we could say like, things like heart rate and different things for a long time were thought to be involuntary. Now we we know that we you can control the heartbeat, you can everything is under control of the mind and consciousness, but miracles are not under conscious control. Miracles are involuntary. When you st find yourself just happy for no earthly reason, there's miracles happening. When you find you're in the flow, you know how they always say, go with the flow? I've been saying that for decades, go with the flow. That's the miracle. It's, it's like a current, it's like a flow, and there's no control over it. You can yield into it, but you can't control it. Miracles can't be controlled. And so it's good to start to open up and start to think, wow, what would my life in this world be like, or what would my days even be like if I had no control over the world? If I wasn't trying to plan it, or direct it, or control it, based on past learning, uh, based on everything I've learned in the past, all the programming and conditioning, what would it be like to be free of the conditioning and just watch, let life unfold, watch the day unfold without any sense of trying to direct any of it, without trying to plan it. That's part of this phase of the dream we're in now. How spontaneous can you be? How radical are you prepared to be with spontaneity? You know, it's kind of a nice invitation because 
you can see the context. The purpose is to take the mind out of thinking it knows about time and space, even that, that we can understand things in a linear way. So a lot of our movies, um, one of the movies I mentioned earlier today, uh, Mr. Nobody, is, a, is what I call a quantum movie. It's all chopped up. It, I remember the first time I watched Mr. Nobody, I just sat there and was like, what is that? And then it was like three or four days later, Jesus started filling in the whole thing and says, watch it with me. I'll point it all out. It was totally, I could not understand any of it. I just was like, what is happening? That movie was so chopped up. It's like taking your spaghetti and just slicing it up with with a knife and it's just all you it's just all a bunch of pieces. But then came all the commentary, which was spectacular. Suddenly everything clicked. Everything, every little nuance of the film had a meaning. You could see the meaning beyond the the phases. Because it 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 didn't um it didn't have that linear component to it. And that's what we have to learn to let go of, is trying to make sense of things in a linear way. We have to let go of causes and effects in the world and start to realize that our thoughts are causative and only our thoughts, that there are no causes. Nothing causes anything in the world, it's just our thoughts. And when we can come to that realization, we're free because no longer are we at the mercy of conditions that are believed to be external. Then you can have a big smile on your face like, wow, what a, what a beautiful picture. What a beautiful unified picture. All the characters played their parts perfectly. Nothing was out of place, ever. It was always in the divine flow. The flow's all there was. That's all, that's all that had any meaning was the this beautiful flow. No possession, no control, no analysis. All the things that we found difficult, that we had to struggle with, were all part of the deception, self-deception, and the flow was all that there was. Just this beautiful, beautiful abstract flow. So this is a really a great movie to kind of really give you a feel for where this is heading. Like it's okay to let go. They say let go and let God. It's okay to let go. You won't die by letting go of the control. You actually live. You find yourself living. You won't struggle with survival if you let go. You'll laugh at the very idea of survival. What was it all about? Survival of what? A body? Yeah, that's what survival was about. It, Who's concerned about survival of the spirit? <laughs> no. The spirit just is. So it's this big let go. And these movies are just such wonderful reminders that it's okay to let go. It's safe to let go. Your life doesn't fall apart. Your life, your mind integrates. Your mind recognizes itself. It comes whole again. Is it always is and has been and will be forever. So there's not a, there's not really a change. Enlightenment is, is but a recognition, not a change at all. It's just a recognition. Recognize, come back to the thought. Cognize is thought. Come back to the thought that you are a thought in the mind of God. Always have been. And nothing could change it. Nothing could throw you off the hook off the off the, into something else